I vividly remember when I was 10 years old. I remember because a hugely significant event took place in my family, the birth of my youngest brother, Edem. I was telling everyone at school, excited all day, knowing that I would be a big sister again. I remember my dad picked me up from school and took me to Bolton Hospital to meet Edem for the first time. Now, I'll be honest, as I walked into the room, there were two things that hit me. First, a welcome from a raspy voice, like a creature from the deep, who it later transpired was my mum on painkillers. And two, actually thinking my brother had been swapped with another baby because he was so pale and looked nothing like the rest of us. The moment wasn't exactly how I imagined, but it was precious nonetheless. There was my mum, happy, healthy, and we were all so overjoyed. This is family, I thought. This is wonderful. Growing up, I thought that this was everyone's experience. You go to the hospital, deliver the baby, and voila, you head home, new baby in tow, ready to start your new life together. A nice story. A happy statistic. But how naive I was. The realization of my naivety struck me fiercely and firmly in the early days of the pandemic. The moment came on the 16th of May 2020, just before I started my training to be a barrister. I was reading a newspaper article that was exploring the different experiences of different groups in the wake of the pandemic. As I read, my eyes grew wide. Could it be true? That black and Asian people were disproportionately affected by COVID-19? That women from those communities were impacted even more damagingly? That 55 percent of women admitted to hospital who were pregnant in March and April of that year were black or from minority backgrounds. As a young black woman, I asked myself, why? Why were women of color more likely to be affected? I started to delve more deeply and found that black women, when pregnant, were eight times more likely to be hospitalized with COVID-19. And overall, almost four times more likely to die in childbirth than their white counterparts. My research continued, revealing that rather than causing these problems, the pandemic merely exposed them, made them more real, more visible, more damning. So many numbers so much data, so many statistics. We face statistics like these every day, whether it be the cost of living crisis and the estimated 500,000 households that went without food or heating in the winter, whether it's domestic abuse and the on average two women that die at the hands of a partner or ex-partner each week whether it's the mental health crisis, and the one in four people that experience a common mental health problem any given week. Statistics, statistics, more statistics. In the overwhelm of it all, we can become lost and disconnected. Lost in the data and disconnected from the reality that behind every number is a name an aggrieved family, a concerned community, crying out for change and reform. Statistics can help us paint a picture, but they pose the risk of becoming hiding places, where a person is just a number, just a data point, just a tally. I encourage us all 
to look beyond the statistics and find the story. The story adds depth. It adds insight. It adds human connection. For me, when I reconnected with the story, I was deeply moved. One story in particular is that of Mary Agiwa Agapong. For five years, Mary worked as a nurse in Luton and Dunstable NHS Trust. Colleagues described her as fun-loving, hardworking, someone who was a joy to be around. She continued with this service and sacrifice alongside her colleagues at the start of the pandemic. Colleagues who we clapped for every Thursday. But Mary was pregnant, high risk, and should not have been working on the front line. In fact, she'd voiced this to her colleagues. Her concerns went unheard until the 5th of April, when she was rushed into hospital with symptoms of breathlessness, weakness, and exhaustion. After being tested for COVID, she was then discharged and returned home. Two days later, Mary was rushed back into hospital, had to undergo an emergency C-section, went into intensive care because of the significant deterioration in her breathing. Five days later, at the age of 28, 28, Mary died. Mary never held her daughter. Mary's husband never said goodbye. There are many reasons why I was struck by Mary's story. Because she worked in and then died in the same hospital. Because there were concerns that she felt pressured to work whilst pregnant. But also because Mary already had a child. A child who, like 10-year-old me, would be waiting with excitement, ready to meet their new sibling, but instead lost their mother. So moved was I by Mary's story that I was compelled to undertake research, master's research, into the solutions to bridge the gaps in maternal health care. Though my research was disturbing, charging, challenging, I knew I had a role to play to address these and so many other injustices. Ultimately, it led to me specializing in employment and personal injury law as I started my career at the bar. There are so many examples of people who have been moved beyond the statistics. Jane Addams, in the early 20th century, a social campaigner and mover who was moved by the stories of poor immigrant families in Chicago. So moved was she that she co-founded Hull House to provide settlement and education. More recently, Brian Stevenson, a civil rights lawyer and activist, who was moved by the stories of inmates on death row. So moved was he that he dedicated his career to fighting for criminal justice reform and providing litigation for marginalized individuals. And right on our doorstep, Eloise Edwards, who moved from Guyana to Manchester in the early 1960s, so moved was she by her own experiences and the experiences of others in the Moss Side area of discrimination and racism that she co-founded the Black Women's Mutual Aid Organization in the 1970s to provide education and support to local school children. Involved in over 35 service organizations, in 1994, Eloise Edwards was awarded an MBE for her services to the community. 
Statistics are useful, but stories are powerful. I believe if we leverage the power to see beyond the statistic to the name, family, community affected, we will be moved with the compassion required to make society a fairer and more equal place for everyone. Thank you.